paleontology and ichthyology. Yeah, I like that stuff. I saw a few sea urchins, a red sea urchin, a bunch of sea anemones. Technically, we haven't even discovered 90% of the ocean. I grin every time I see one of the big dinosaurs, and the idea that these things used to walk around in your neighborhood is inspiring. 35 million specimens that we have here that document the history of life on Earth provides its own sense of wonder. And in addition, we try to convey to people how we know what we know and what is the work that our scientists are doing with these objects and specimens that sheds light on the future. At the Natural History Museum, the science, the basic science that goes on is cataloging the diversity of life and looking at relationships of organisms past and present. Our collections are studied by scientists throughout the world. Our mission here at the Natural History Museum is, is not only to do science that we share with other scientists, but to educate the public. Always collections are powerful because they are the real thing, both in research and in public interpretation. And that's what makes them matter to all of us. And for us, we have the added challenge of trying to do that for people of all ages, from small children to seniors who are uh, interested in lifelong learning. The Natural History Museum is a hub for understanding and discussing some of the most important issues of our day. You know, what Public Programs does is it does some of the interpretation. If you are a third, a fourth, a hundredth time visitor, what it does is it gives you an opportunity to see the museum in a different way. Once we give them a little taste, they keep coming. How do you measure student learning? If students really know and understand something, how would you know that? Certainly a test or a, something that you bubble in measures what you know in the moment, but years later, kids are coming back and talking to us about their experiences at the museum. Uh, in a classroom setting, it's more limited, but here, uh, you can learn by being chased or being uh, pursued. and that becomes a memorable experience, particularly if it's fun. And a lot of fun takes place here, so this is a fun place to learn. What's great about teaching with this T-Rex is the kids understand science immediately, how it affects their lives. They get to scream, they get to laugh, they get to cry and have a lot of fun with science. We bring our students to the museum and the curators here and the gallery interpreters share all their knowledge with them. I work with the mobile outreach program which uh, are the sea, sky, and earth mobiles. It's an absolute great treat to show up to a school with the coolest thing they've seen all year. By coming to this place I can share the world with them that they can't get otherwise. And if learning is lasting two and three and four years beyond the point of instruction, you know you've succeeded. If we want to examine um, what's going on today with the, the, the mass extinction that is decimating our biodiversity, it's not a bad idea to look back to the closest mass extinction that essentially um, decimated uh, the diversity of dinosaurs. It's about understanding that our actions and our decisions impact the well-being and experiences of other living things, human and non-human. So our challenge in some ways is to inform people about uh, why we're losing biodiversity while stressing the science behind it and, and what we can do to reverse those problems. In the last 200 years, so much change has happened that um, documenting what that change is is more pressing than it ever has been before. What we're trying to accomplish here is a museum that's constantly changing. Why not? We're constantly changing. That's the story of life on Earth. Our new exhibits are going to invite people to experience all of these objects in an entirely new way. The Rotunda itself is a beautiful, elegant, classic architectural space. 
The idea of the exhibit is that we want to get people to think about the process of scholarship. And so it's always question and answer, and there are always more questions. You can sum up the age of mammals, I guess, in six words. Continents move, climates change, mammals evolve. We aim to create an exhibit that is multi-layered and that is sophisticated. It, this is not an exhibit for just kids. This is an exhibit for everybody. You can find history and you can find evidence of really momentous change, um, not just in obscure places, but you know, in, in your backyard, literally. We are already a world-class museum, but we're gonna go from excellent to eminent. There are so many reasons to come here. You, you can look at unique architecture, you can look at wonderful interiors, unsurpassed exhibits. We really have an opportunity to provide a kind of experience for tens of millions of uh, people that no other place has. We aspire to give them an experience that teaches everyone something, makes them feel smart, makes them feel engaged, and makes them feel part of this place. My favorite part of the museum is walking through and seeing children and families and knowing that somewhere in those groups are the future scientists who are going to carry our mission forward into the next century.